I can go more this way than this way. So this way, but and then this way can kind of go a little bit more. Okay, so you were about the 80% range of motion to the right. Turn your head left again for me. And I'd say about the 67, 60% range of motion. You should have 80 degrees. Push your head forward. And now try to lift your arms up from the side. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Now bring your head back as far as you can. And then try to bring up your arms down. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Let the head go. There you go, I got you. Okay. A little tight. Oh I know. <laughs> How's that feel? You dig your head left for me. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> right, there you go. I noticed it mostly, I think, in pictures once, and I was like, wow, that's pretty bad. And um, so I started trying to do stretches and stuff. I saw, like, we, you know, the, to use the doorway to right. kind of open things up. And I'm more aware of it now, but I'll find myself still, like, like pulled in. It's, and I drive a lot with the kids. I'm taking them everywhere. So I'm pulled in, and I'll try and pull, and I can almost still feel, like, my muscles, like, fighting me to pull it back. And then it creates that pain, like... Right in that neck area up here. Does it go to your shoulder blade too, or does it just stay in the neck? It uh, kind of sometimes it'll go to my shoulder blade when I'm when I'm really trying to like keep it upright. I'll feel like the ache back there. Our posture is defined by ligaments, rubber bands that wrap our spine. And you have four kids like me, <laughs> being forward, those ligaments on the front are never stretched. Yeah. And also the pectoralis and muscles in the front can get tight, and that holds you forward too. So you have muscles that we have to stretch, and we have ligaments that need to be stretched and unlike the ligaments on the back that have been stretched out all the time and these muscles have been stretched out all the time so like I said earlier our posture is a kind of a compilation of where we are the most amount of time if we sit a lot drive a lot take care of kids bend forward a lot our body just retains that I know you said you had some chiropractic care they were just adjusting you but not really showing any stretches and we're going to go over that today a little bit so it's stretching that gets us here it's stretching that gets us out of here we can't reshape hard clay we have to work the clay and work the spine, make it soft so that we can safely stretch it. What can happen is if we stretch a spine where, like let's say for instance that most people have their chest very tight and their upper neck is very tight and they're only bending in their lower neck. And then if I have you stretch, the chest is gonna remain tight, the upper neck is gonna remain tight and we're just gonna only bend where we've been bending and then therefore you might feel like you get hurt. Uh, I stretched and it pinched an area. Right. And so I caution stretching if we're not first adjusted. Even yoga or even some milder versions of stretching, people can get in a little trouble if we're not prepped for it. Anything else going on? Anything other symptoms that I need to know about? Just just the neck pain? Just it's primarily that. I mean I did have a fall a long time ago. Okay. Um, so sometimes if I sit for a long period of time like that coccyx bone it gets like really tender and I have to get up and move around right on the adjust. tip of the tailbone yeah I fell down the stairs <laughs> gotcha okay all right and some sinus issues how long has that been going on um I have so I have eczema I mean it, I don't know if you noticed so that's like kind of just hand in hand with that I have a lot of allergies but environmental allergies and they're always triggered um it's constant so every morning I wake up congested and how long has the eczema going, eczema going on since birth and no, they just do creams. What's the treatment they've been doing for that? They so I actually, like, I um, experienced the toxics, what a, you know, the the steroid stuff. That right. I, so I, I'm like cold turkey right now. I think I had like a, um, like a cold and I was getting wheezy, so they gave me steroids. And then my skin freaked out, so they were like, well, let's extend your steroid treatment. And so instead of just the Medrol pack, I was on it for like 30 days and I was tapering down slowly. But the last week when it was like barely any, I w it was just head to toe, like it, wow. it just was insane. And after doing my own research and seeing the evidence of it, even though some of the doctors weren't like saying that what I was saying was actually a thing, because there's not a lot of research on it, I guess, yeah. um, I decided just to call it cold turkey no lotion no steroid creams no oral steroids and I just don't don't do it liver is your primary detox organ um, I'm curious I'd be you know wanting to talk to you after you know after today's session about a liver cleanse I'd be really okay. curious to go over and show you some things about cleansing your liver if the liver see a lot of blood tests only really check for liver failure they don't really see liver dysfunction and, right. and now you're having it from birth 
you know, could be you had a, 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 a as a young child sometimes it's an underdeveloped liver, you know, mm -hmm. we're still developing, and then maybe the liver wasn't cleaned, you know, maybe it was clogged, I don't know. I, I mean, as an adult, I, even teenagers, I've helped a lot with eczema, because what happens is if the liver's not doing its job, your skin takes up the job of getting waste out of your body, and mm -hmm. so that's part of why, it, you know, red and blisters and scabs, mm -hmm. is you have waste coming out the skin, and then it, you know, hurts. And the skin, it's like a, almost like a, like a diaper rash, you know, so there's inflammation constantly because the skin is doing a job that's not supposed to be doing. There's a liver, you know, why isn't your liver working with that first question? And I know that maybe the blood test, no, Ed, my liver's fine, but again, SGOT, SGBT, these, these liver enzymes they check for really are only if you're in, you know, cirrhosis right. or in failure here. There's, there's milder versions and there's stronger versions of liver cleansing, but that would be the path I would go down to see if we can get to the source for why your skin is... Is it over your whole body? Is right it now, just, it's mostly just, just here and it's a little bit on my back. Okay. But um, it's right now it's mostly triggered by sweating. You know, like it's, right. It's well, that's what sweating is toxins. Right. Where right. Is, and that's part of even even during a liver cleanse, it might at its worst. Well, you're going to be flushing. You know, right. you're going to be stimulating your body to expel. But we want to get the liver doing its job. I'm not going to wash all over you. Yeah. Right. Any any skin blisters or anything like that? I it's definitely my back is definitely not like like this. This is the worst. Yeah. Um, so there are little spots, but I mean, we'll most be of careful this, go around them. Yeah. All right. I would almost agree that that's probably because it's like when I was a kid, it wasn't nearly as bad as this. It it triggered after my second pregnancy. It just well, pregnancy. You're now your your liver's on double duty as far as the side goes. Wow. I can go more this. I can go more this way than this way. So this way, but and then this way can kind of go a little bit more. Okay, so we're about to be eighty percent range of motion to the right. Turn your head left again for me. You should have eighty degrees. Right. You know, we're probably around forty-five, fifty degrees there. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let me look at you. Look straight forward. Part of it also is when an easy test. Your head's about an inch forward. The more forward your head goes, mm -hmm. and this is a test. You know, there's a couple things I want you to just practice with me. Push your head forward. And I'll try to lift your arms up from the side. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Now bring your head back as far as you can, and then try to bring up your arms down. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> pretty, pretty drastic range of motion right. difference with, you know, like we, we, we describe it as like your head's on a railroad, and you're just pushing your head straight forward. Another one is also breathing. When the head's forward, go ahead and try with me. Push your head forward now. Take a deep breath in. Mm -hmm. Right? Now bring your head back. Take a deep breath in. A lot easier to breathe. Yeah. And then the last two are what you were just showing me is that you're, since your head's forward, if I push my head forward, mm -hmm. your ability to rotate right. is less. So part of it is as you bring your head back, mm -hmm. you'll notice, you know, go ahead and bring, try to bring your head back as best you can and then turn your head. You're gonna be able to rotate more yeah. with your ear over your shoulder. And that range of motion deficit is a really an, a result of a forward head posture that our world hasn't guided you to how do I fix this right. um, and it is difficult that's why nobody wants to do it it's too much it's too easy to just adjust people and see you later and make them feel good orthodontistry isn't, isn't fun and same thing with posture change it and I'm sore it's all sore now and you know you've woken up these, these monsters inside me and so we're gonna go through it together but that's that's the reason why you're and then also there's injury in there it's why one side's different than the other but both sides are reduced because of the forward head posture. This is, we call it a counter coup. When the head goes forward, this has to go backwards to balance us. So mm -hmm. if this goes forward, this has to go back. You mm -hmm. can't actually bring the head back without bringing the chest in. Mm -hmm. And so the first step in, in fixing you is actually to get the chest moving so that the chest can come in and actually draw the head back. You Just neck treatment alone won't do it. Right. So we have to do neck and but I would, the first step to me is unlocking the chest. That's right, because that's where it feels like it. It's just like, even if I try to, my body, I can literally feel the muscles like pulling me yeah. back in. And then sometimes I find myself over adjusting to try and force it. And then I end up hurting down here. <laughs> right, you're gonna pinch something in the bottom. <laughs> right. Or it's just not possible. It's, 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 you know, your muscles can't do it. We have to have good posture and that would be where you wanna be, right. not by you know, right. holding your muscles there, right? <laughs> you can have your star on your back for me. Take a deep breath in for me. Head back for me and then exhale. Let all the air out. I got you, let it go. 
Here we go. Deep breath in. Here we go. Let it all go. Here we go. Exhale. It's going to be a little sore. Here we go. Come on. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. All right. A little tight there. I know. I'm sorry. I know. I know. It's sore. I see it. I see it. Exhale. Yeah, real tight there. Okay. It's okay. The first one moved. Second and third. <laughs> a little reluctant. This is where I call into coercion. We have to go through your spine and kind of work the joints to get them to move. They are, they are frozen in there. Deep, deep breath in for me. Try to twist for me. Exhale. There we go. Okay, good. Other side for me. Good. Uh -huh. All right, we'll face up for me. Very good. Uh -huh. Yeah, a lot of tension up here. This is mm -hmm. when we were talking about the thyroid earlier. You know, this tightness up here leads me to you know, I said this is supposed to be your main engine. If this is not working, the lower neck's going to be overworking. The lower mm -hmm. neck's what's controlling your thyroid. Even the sinuses drain down here. So the I asked about sinus issues because they don't drain properly if the neck is tight. Mm -hmm. And the more forward your head goes, the tighter the muscles get. Bring your head right, and then let your chin go up for me. Now relax your neck. There you go. Just relax. There you go. One second. A little bit. A little deeper. Deep breath in. Exhale. Let it go. Let the head go. There you go, I got you. Okay. A little tight. Oh I know. How's that feel? You did, you, did good, you did good. I got you. Let it go. Here we go. Uh-huh. There you go. All right. Yeah. But even that was just like, mm -hmm. it's like a door just opened in there or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a gateway in here. and mm -hmm. You can't have this all jammed up. And Four kids, there's our... Our mutual <laughs> workload. Right. Yeah. What are their ages? Um, my youngest is five, oh. eight, uh, nine, and eleven. Okay. We have 14, 11, 7, and one. So. Oh wow. You're right in there. There we go. That's a lymphatic drain right through here. So yeah, this is direct pressure on the drain lines that make the sinuses not drain properly. And well, like I said, your neck isn't, uh, not all of it's participating. <laughs> so the you know, the way it folds is not, mm -hmm. so it's all bunched up in certain areas and bending too much in another area. I need your neck sort of creasing everywhere and bending everywhere, not just one area. That's where I experienced most of my pain. Mm -hmm. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four kids, Ed. What do you got? <laughs> Worked on a two-day-old baby yesterday, and the you know, mom was a third kid, and you know, no epidural, no, no pitocin, natural birth. And I was like, "What do you got? Pain? What do you?" <laughs> she said, "What do you got?" <laughs> I said, "I said birth, gave birth to a baby two days ago." <laughs> that could hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I did it twice without an epidural. The first time was not a choice. <laughs> she was born in the car. Wow. Really? Yes. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> not to my poor husband. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Were you, like, close to the hospital just trying to make it? That's an interesting story. Um, we were, we had to, we, so I was living in Boca Raton, and we had moved to, um, Kind of like the Royal Palm area, mm. but in the middle of the pregnancy. But I decided I wanted to keep my, you know, my midwife, and I wanted to go to the same hospital I delivered my first. And I was, you know, my first I was induced. So with the second, I felt contractions, and I was like, "Oh, we got plenty of time." <laughs> <laughs> and then it just came on like with a vengeance, and I was like, "No, we got to go right now." 
and it was a, like at least a 45 minute drive and I thought it was gonna be fine but I started going through really like active labor late stage labor and not realizing it really and um, Wow we were on 95 and my husband said something like along the lines of um, it's okay your water didn't even break yet and I swear he didn't finish that sentence, sentence. before it was like a movie like oh, no. here we go I'm gonna get a little more chin up there it is a little bit more I know there it is nice all right yes yeah, little things that could have been taught to us as kids Postural habits, laying on your belly, arching up, not always, you know, sitting in cars. It's getting worse now with the iPhone generation. Yeah. I don't feel like there's really even much of a sense that that it's bad for us. That it's just like, eh, whatever. You know, know, you know it's uh, like, i worried about my kids because I look at my kids' posture and I see questionable posture, like rolled in shoulders right. a little bit. They're young. Right, we just we adjust them and then and then teach them little things. There's not much at that age. They don't need to be worked on. They don't have all the soft tissue, stiffness and scar tissue that adults have. And okay. it's it's really just um, we have to combat. If you ask you know the average kid how many hours they spend seated, seated, the answer I'm typically getting is around 14 hours a day. Oh yeah. You know, and so that's that. There's your problem. Your posture, like I said, is is just a compilation or a distillation of the amount of time you spend in a position. And so if we spend our time all rounded forward, that's where our body will want to be. It's easy to just fall prey to that and become stuck forward. We have to confront, we have to battle daily. Like our teeth, keep cleaning our teeth and cleaning our spine are daily battles. And you know, We don't have any easy button. I wish there was an easy button for posture change. It's work and takes time for our posture to get worse, takes time to fix it. But with with how stiff this was when I did that, so this part, this moved down here, mm -hmm. and there was pretty much very little movement from here to the top, and so we have to now coerce, I call it. So we also need to work on the pec on the front a little bit too, so at the end we'll check that out before we go stretching. Are you okay? You okay too much? No, it's right. good. It's, okay. good. It's, a, it's a good pain. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Surprising how much more tender it is actually right there. I didn't mm. think it was going to be tender right there. Yeah, these are the roots of your neck. What's sore back here is preventing you from being upright. This, you know, this, your body tries to compress this and, mm, ow, right. <laughs> no thanks. You know, so it's creating room back here for your body to go back into it. Where, where where it's possible to try to to reduce the amount of time that we're spending forward and then when you're reading a book to your kids or I don't know just little things you lay on your belly arch up put pillows beneath your chest you know work on what we call it cobra pose in yoga <laughs> you're working on arching back and you know again part of this is assuming that your back is unlocked you know sometimes like I said earlier cobra pose can hurt people if you don't have your whole spine working you know, as much as I'm not really on a computer or anything mm -hmm. like that, I feel like a lot of this got worse for with actually breastfeeding because of the mm -hmm. position that you had to be mm -hmm. in constantly. Mm -hmm. right, and four kids all the years. Right, exactly. There yeah. you go. Well, I felt like I was doing it for like five years straight. That's right. <laughs> there you go. If guys had to do it, this would be the end of the human race. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm not, I'm not joking. I think that'd be it.
that bother any of your eczema? Are you doing okay? Oh, no, I'm doing okay. Okay. What really is the problem is the organ's not doing its job. Right. For me, it's more like a overwhelming amount of information, and mm -hmm. I'm not really understanding what to, what's right and what's what to, wrong. Or what to, what to sift through. Yeah. This ag aggravation with sweat thing is actually fairly new within the last like few mm -hmm. years or so. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just another straw on the camel's back. Just another thing to push everything over the edge. Yeah, which is frustrating because mm -hmm. um, you know, with, especially with the last two pregnancies, like not noticing that I'm not letting go of the weight that I gained with the pregnancies, and it's like now I feel like I can't exercise because it just causes more pain and discomfort, mm -hmm. and it leaves me feeling like yep. I'm trapped. Yep, I hear you. you got to have a healthy spine. It starts with your spine. You're one of the biggest reasons people don't want to move is that I'm hurting, so you don't move and don't exercise. You don't, everything becomes stiffer and clogged and mm -hmm. downward spiral. We have to it begins and ends with the spine. You have to clean the spine, get your posture right. That puts you in a position where now you can tackle things. Right. Yeah, I mean, my goodness. Me doing the hug adjustment and now the elbow, we'll try it again. I mean, the, uh, a little clicker, boy. <laughs> it's not going to make a dent in this. Holding kids, nursing, all of that. Just, you know, you locked your chest and then it just remained locked. I feel less crazy that you're confirming the way mm -hmm. I feel, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you're not. Yeah. You're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you go to the doctor and you talk to them about how you're feeling, and they just look at your blood work and they say, "Well, it looks good." Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks so for helpful. help. Yeah. So helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's in failure yet. <laughs> when it's failing, then we'll tell you something wrong. But right. Well, where's the healthcare then? That's not really healthcare. It's really just illness care. Then you guys don't. We, Right, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. That feels amazing. <laughs> mm. Nutrients in, waste out, is really how your body heals. The word healing is a misnomer, it's really a replacement. So your body, you know, the old stuff's removed, the, the new stuff's allowed to be made or built, and then we term that healing. When the area is really tight, the circulation is disrupted. Right? It's, not, it's harder for blood to get into a really stiff, tight area. So a majority of that tightness is postural. Some of it's injury and guarding. And by massaging and then gua shaing, we're trying to open up and flush or clean that internal tissue that's been tight and boxed up and sequestered. This has to get out of the way. <laughs> this all has to be. Mm -hmm. So with the yellow dendril, we're going to try to start above it, and then we're going to tissue pull kind of right over this, and then hold, and then we take, we make contact here, and we all in between these shoulder blades where we're going to be stretching. All this has to go out of the way. Wow. Right there. Feel it into my fingertips. That's a nice knot right there, yeah. There we go. There we go. 
I know stuff. I gotcha. Okay. stretch I'm going to show you is trying to emulate this <laughs> at probably a milder level, but we're trying to emulate what I'm doing right now, okay. holding pressure here, and then for a much longer period of time, actually it takes about 20 minutes to stretch these ligaments. There it is, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Even while that tailbone hurts, is that this area gets all congested and inflamed. You gotta clean up the tissue all around the sacrum here, the glute. A lot of nerve endings around the coccyx, but in, around the sacrum, and so you know, getting any tenderness out of this area. There's a large joint right above it, that's what we checked when we put you on your side, where the mobility of this joint kind of cleans the tissue. Kind of like the Tin Man, Wizard of Oz, a little squirt of oil <laughs> lubricates itself through mobility. Well, that explains why I leaned to my right in the car without mm -hmm. really realizing it. I didn't realize mm -hmm. how tender it was right there. Right, you were in, in avoidance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's, you gotta get that tenderness out of there. A lot of that is really just an effect of this. This creates this, and so it's, it's really more getting the chest in, getting the upper back in the right position is gonna clear that. Oh, this feels already like so I know. much looser. It just feels like I can just drop my arms down. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, that's what I'm saying. I wanted to check this a little bit. So Good. Yeah, rub the front part of your shoulder and bring it. There you go. Just draw on the shoulder back. There you go. certain patients that put TVs on the ceiling, <laughs> put TVs upside down, because <laughs> they're going to be stretching, uh, and one guy, you know, you want me to do 20 minutes a day, I'll do 40 minutes, you know, and so <laughs> he lives in this game room, and he's got his TVs all around the room, and it's work. You, know, you, need, you need mom time to just, you know, take a break. I would just lay there, mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, 20 minutes, no leave mom alone, <laughs> like Carl, I'm hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> The kids always think I'm funny because I'm. I actually lay on the floor sometimes when it gets really bad, mm. and I'll just like leave me. I'm just gonna lay here, guys. Just give me a minute. Mm. I'm gonna try and stretch it out. Even the drainage of your sinuses drains around the ears, so getting this unlocked. Go ahead and tilt your head to the right for me a little bit. Okay. Go ahead and 
tilt to the right. Oh, you be. That's beautiful. Oh, Go ahead, tilt to your left for me. Okay. Go ahead, tilt to. There we go a little bit. All right. Come with me. Right here. Right here. A little bit lower, sorry, a little bit. There we right there. But bend the bend the knees for me. There we go. And then give me your hands for a second. We're gonna go straight up. And we're gonna try to tissue pull a little bit this way. Get the idea? Mm -hmm. If you can let the arms relax if you can. We wanna there you, go. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, if you, you can put the arms aside, but we wanna try to eventually have the arms you know, relax to the floor. There we go. There we go. The goal is twenty minutes. We have to twenty minutes is a real number for how long it takes to stretch the rubber bands. Mm -hmm. So muscles stretch a lot faster, but but ligaments take a little bit longer to stretch, so we're trying to get 20 minutes. Your targeted area is, like I said, from here to here. Okay. Is between this this whole area can be targeted. Now you want to make your contact, and then get a downward. That makes sense. Remember how I grabbed your arm and mm -hmm. I pulled you up? So that made that made that you made your contact, and then I had it go kind of downward pressure on your back. Lay back for me. I got you. There we go. Grab your hair for a second. There we go. Right there. There we go. Head, head back. I got you. There we go. Now with the roller, I got some books behind your head. Same thing, arms up with this one. Okay. So yeah, you're trying to, you know, try to keep your hands together, relax. If you can't, same thing. If your hands go tingly, put them down. So you turn your head left for me. There we go. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> right there you go. Having your atlas unlocked and yeah, and getting like I said, part of it is the head's more back over the shoulder, so you right. can turn your neck better with your head more. Your push head forward. You're not gonna be able to return as much with your head forward. Right. No, it feels weird to do that right now. <laughs> now you look like I want to be. <laughs> and that's where you're gonna last right. longest. Your back, your spine will. I don't last. feel like my body's pulling myself either. That sensation always kind of like, I don't know. It just felt like a battle. I was like constantly. You're gonna have good posture because you want to be there, not because right. you're trying to force yourself. This is where I want to be at, mm -hmm. and that's how posture's changed. 